the the thing that we're really um, in in all marketers should really think about this in, in the direct response world is um, is you want to pay attention to your average order value. If you're giving discounts, but you're getting a cost, if your normal cost for purchase is $10 and you're getting a $5 cost for purchase during the holidays, but you're giving such heavy discounts that your average order value plummets, your return on ad spend, your ROAS is going to lower. It, it might not be any better than it normally was without the holidays around. Like, What was the point of giving the discount? You spent a lot of money and you returned the same amount you know, you you return the same amount basically that 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 you normally would, and so we do use discounts, but we're really careful to not offer really big discounts on the stuff that are best sellers or that keep our average order value up. Hey everyone, uh, this is Eric Dick, the robust marketer, coming at you live in the Facebook ad buyers group. Uh, Tim Bird, uh, my partner on the upcoming events, uh, Facebook and e-commerce mastery live is now in Bangkok, uh, getting ready for his mastermind and his uh, speaking dates at affiliate world Asia and e-commerce mastery live, my other event in Bangkok. Um, but he sort of said, why don't we start doing some of these interviews in the group for you guys with some of the speakers that we have coming up in Las Vegas. So I thought one of the first people I'd love to do a chat with is my friend Colin McGuire, who is probably one of my the most viewed interview subjects I've had yet uh, on our last interview that we did uh, probably around six months ago or so. Uh, so I wanted to have him back. Well, after that conversation, after what he was talking about, I think resonated with a lot of people so much. I was like, I got to get this guy on stage. Uh, and I knew it was something he was after, which is something we can talk to a little bit of, of sort of raising the profile of himself and the agency. Uh, and so, yeah, today we're here to talk a little bit about uh, this new breed of age performance agency that Colin's company, Boomin, really re represents uh, some of his content strategies that have worked over the past little bit on Black Friday, and then a bit of a tease for why you really got to come see him in Las Vegas uh, on January 9th and 10th, 2019. So welcome to the Robust Marketer, Colin. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm stoked about it. Just trying to yeah. figure out right now uh, where we're exactly we're live, but I just found us, and okay, I'm cool. going to go ahead and share it on my nice. page. Yeah, there I should do that too. Actually, um, nice man. Okay, awesome. Well, so let's. Do, so I think you know, not everyone probably. We, we actually did advertise your our, a couple bunch of snippets from our last interview, but so probably yeah. like know who we are. But tell everyone a little bit more about yourself uh, and Boomin in the nutshell. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name is Colin McGuire. I am the CEO and one of the co-founders of Boomin. We are a performance marketing agency, but uh, to be honest with you, uh, the way that we pitch it to clients is that we're a full service agency. So we do have uh, teams uh, all the way from analytics and media buying all the way through uh, web design development and normal creative design as well as multimedia. Uh, but we're a full service agency. We focus specifically on customer and user acquisition for two types of clients, e-commerce and mobile app companies. Uh, so we do tons of uh, media buying, especially on Facebook. Um, and we know the e-commerce world inside and out. <clears throat> um, I've been involved in e-commerce for like the last 10 years, started in college, uh, just kind of by trial and error have, have gotten this far. And uh, we just had a really fun Black Friday and Cyber Monday weekend. So uh, Honestly, just stoked to to share some knowledge with you guys, and uh, you know, happy to uh, you know get into it. Okay, let's start with the frame of everything here. This this is something I'm really interested in because I've been in this performance marketing space. I've been in a, starting in affiliate marketing, moving through into this info marketing, and, and into you know, I've done mobile marketing. I've done, I've done sort of the gamut of this whole space. And the thing that I've always been interested in is the way individuals uh, have been able to learn these tactics. And apply them, you know, up, up along the spectrum, and and essentially build um, agencies, turn their media buying skills into agencies that are becoming more and more desirable for a whole spectrum of clients, not just traditional performance advertisers, but it, but the unique position that that these young people who understand social media, understand the levers and pulleys of Facebook ads, and understand you know traditional marketing principles as well, are just forming this new breed of agencies that are probably doing some damage out there in the real world. What's your experience with this? Yeah, I mean, actually, just like I mentioned, it's honestly a little bit of trial and error. Um, 
you know, I've been uh, the the people that have been around for a long time. Uh, we we know each other's names, and um, you know, honestly, it's like there there's no better teacher than experience. And so, I think one of the things that you had touched on is like, how did I get started? How did we create an agency? And honestly, it was um, I started by building my own e-commerce brands, um, and I built and sold a, a, a small, a, a, you know, a couple small handfuls of smaller e-commerce brands. But what happened from there is um, I kind of became known as, you know, kind of like the e-commerce guy or the e-commerce kid. A lot of people would introduce me to friends and family or people within their network that were trying to sell online. And what ended up happening is, um, you know, I started kind of doing hourly consulting and then eventually met the right people. And, and, and I met my two business partners and, and uh, both of them have a lot more agency experience and know the operation and the execution and honestly a lot of the professionalism I look up uh, to them for a lot of that stuff uh, and and you just kind of combined like my growth hack strat slash uh, like growth hack and uh, performance and, and direct response marketing strategies for e-commerce and mobile apps uh, and kind of married them together with with their experience in, in, in operations and execution and and now we've got a, a great agency um, but were you particularly saying like what, what makes us different or, or how are we different than maybe some of the more traditional agencies? Well, that answered the question for me actually, because I, you know, the, 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 that aspect of professionalism and operations, you know, the world, the, the, the affiliate performance market or the scrappy performance market, that's never been their strength. You know, yeah. they're figuring shit out on the fly and testing and seeing results and doing things. So it's, it's interesting to me that you've had such success by marrying this, you know, traditional operation style that you have with your partners and yeah. the scrappy style of what you do. Yeah. I mean, to, to be honest with you, it, that's exactly what it is. Like, you know, we, we really have like three, you know, we, we have a few principles that, that we live by, like remain scrappy, remain nimble and, and have fun. Um, and I know like the third one's cheesy, but, um, you know, the, the, we are growth hack marketers. We're marketing maniacs. We're, you know, you know, like the the individual freelance contractor that is that knows direct response ads and knows how to build funnels and knows how to do all that stuff. Um, that's that's us too. Uh, but we just brought, you know, we have, you know, we have an operations team and project managers and analytics, like, the, the, and, and we have processes in place now. And so. Basically, what our goal was was to always remain scrappy. If if you head to our website or anything like that, that's literally our communication. It's like, hey, we are the scrappy go getters, the resourceful ones. We figure out a way to get it done. Uh, yet we yet we have that like big agency feel kind of, or like the 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 uh, feel of working with a traditional agency with you know standardized kickoff calls and check ins and data studio reports and and all that stuff that you would expect from a much larger group. And we've been able to harness the individual powers of of everyone on the team and and uh, and and kind of uh, you know grow the agency. I think there's probably a world of training to be explored on that other side as well. You know, we're always trying to push the boundaries on on uh you know the technical side of marketing the creative side of marketing but I, I think it's interesting that your your partners uh yeah could i think there's there's a lot of people that, that need to bridge to you know to bridge your like you, you you're in a good position to have been able to take uh these, these scrappy skills that you have and have a you know it infused into this into this larger business with massive scale so speaking of scale let's talk a little bit about black friday and cyber monday at iStack training we had our best ever uh weekend we tripled our sales from last year uh, awesome. It was fantastic. We did, we, yeah, we, we were doing a lot of really cool things with the ads. Uh, it all worked well. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the clients you worked with uh, during Black Friday and what were the things that really worked well for you? Yeah, so, um, and, and I'm happy we kind of got into this so it's valuable for everyone watching, but um, th the way that we approach Black Friday and the holidays is a little bit, um, perhaps it's non-traditional in, in, the, in the ways that most other groups or companies approach Black Friday and Cyber Monday, uh, and specifically kind of like that Black Friday, that, that BFCM weekend, Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend, uh, from basically, you know, uh, uh, Friday all the way until uh, Tuesday uh, is really when, when people are running it. And we kind of, the way that we see it is everyone, especially when you're buying ads on, on Facebook uh, or, or just media buying in general, that is going to be your most competitive time of the year, really, is that Black Friday through Cyber Monday weekend. And so the way that we approach that is knowing that, yes, 
we want to go toe to toe with everyone that, you know, all, all of our competition and everyone else that's targeting people that fall inside of our audiences. But at the same time, we also want to give ourselves enough time for ads to optimize, for people to see ads, maybe for the competitiveness to go down. So the economics uh, are a little bit better um, in our ad buys. And so we actually will start typically on Thanksgiving and then run either all the way through maybe uh, either minimum 10 days, but but most of the time uh, we'll actually run our Black Friday, Cyber Monday as an extended holiday campaign. And we actually just kind of structure what we're offering um, within that campaign. So the way that we plan for Black Friday and Cyber Monday is yes, we do plan for Black Friday and Cyber Monday and that weekend in between, but we're actually planning and setting goals uh, that that extend further um, further into the further into the holidays, just to give ourselves more time to find success and for everyone else to kind of run out of ad spend and ramp down their ads. So it's more economic for us to buy ads, uh, usually in the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, following Cyber Monday. That's so really just focusing on the on the like, and, and do the ad costs come down significantly during that period? Is that like, um, a big part of the strategy? Yeah. So. Uh, so uh, our, our media buying team, my media buying team specifically uh, will, will come to me and say like, hey, uh, here, here's the four ad accounts that I'm just going to go ahead and recommend that we turn off ads now. Because, uh, you know, if, if a client gives you a $5,000 budget, a $10,000 budget, a $50,000 budget or a $100,000 budget, right? Like there becomes a point where the amount of budget you're given it to go toe to toe with everyone. Um, that, that that's trying to target the same people that you're targeting, the CPMs go up. And so therefore, you know, your cost per clicks and, and just the, the efficiency or the cost of your traffic increases. And so they'll come to me and say like, hey, I'd rather spend this money starting on Tuesday. It's, it's just not worth it for us to compete right now. There's some sort of diminishing returns. They're confident that we can actually get more return once Cyber Monday ends. And yeah, we, we do see we were seeing CPMs in some accounts actually just recently we had a client call today where we were discussing the fact that um, we were seeing $56 CPM. It was just unacceptable. So we turned off ads during the holiday weekend and we relaunched literally the same exact campaign, uh, just turned them back on and we're down to like 28 bucks. So you can see they, they come down quite a bit. Um, or, or It's mostly like um, a lot of the... Uh, more viral e-commerce type products where the CPMs come drastically down when you're targeting like just a very broad audience. But also it also happens in very niche audiences like Western hunting audiences or rodeo audiences or, you know, m m you know more, more niche demographics or, 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 um, or, or targets. Very interesting. And, and you just ran the same discount creative after the fact, just like Cyber Week or whatever. Or was it not discounted after the fact? It it depends, and and so I'm I'm happy to talk about that. One thing that I recommend for all smaller e-commerce brands: if you have an ad budget of about five thousand dollars every thirty days, so five thousand dollars a month, I would recommend that that you do, and also if if you, if you don't consider yourself an expert media buyer, if you don't consider yourself an expert at conversion rate optimization, if you don't consider yourself an expert at reading analytics and being able to chart them and make decisions off of them, I do not recommend for you to spend a majority of your budget in four days. There's just not enough time for your experience level to optimize and, and get the, the correct amount of ROI that you're looking for. So that being said, a lot of our clients that have smaller budgets, what, what we like to do is we like to have our campaigns, again, run from, so we'll do holiday campaigns. It'll typically start on Thanksgiving. And it'll actually run in through about December. Last year was December 13th, I believe. And this year it'll be December 15th, uh, which because uh, in USPS, US uh, Postal Mail, the last time to uh, ship something is on December 18th for to arrive by Christmas. And so uh, we want to give about three days order processing time. So we'll kill ads on about the 13th. Um, but we'll run ads from December 13th or Thanksgiving Day all the way to December 13th with an entire holiday campaign. Now, back to your offer, we will start with our biggest offer is going to be typically on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, right? Or 
and, and then we'll we'll have other offers. So we'll be like, hey, use this discount code on Cyber Monday and Black Friday. But all of the products that are on sale are also already marked down on the store. So on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, there's a little bit of extra incentive. However, we're running discounts or we're running our promotions um, and, and our campaigns for much longer than just like a, a five to six day period. We're running it for a 14 day period. And the reason that we do that is just so we can get, you know, we have a lot of clients. Our media buyers are busy. And honestly, uh, we're already looking at the account, you know, pretty much hourly. But just to give ourselves time to look at the results, make decisions, optimize landing page, op optimize creatives, optimize targeting, um, and, and optimize our entire marketing stack in general, we'll give ourselves more time. And so what we'll actually see is we'll get a big rush and then it'll be either the same offer or a, or a slightly different offer. And I'm, and I'm more than happy to, to give an example if you're interested in that. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. Um, so, so I'll give you an example. Um, currently, one of our one of our clients is born and raised outdoors. They are um, they are Western uh, hunting influencers and content creators. They basically have a YouTube TV show where they go and hunt elk uh, and and other uh, animals. Um, and they do a a campaign called Land of the Free 2.0, where they'll actually um, do primitive hunting for 45 days straight. So they get like three showers and they literally hunt elk for 45 days straight. Um, they're in the middle of that campaign right now. Like spears? Uh, uh, with bows. They, they actually bow hunt. Okay, that makes yeah. more sense. I'm against so, spear so, hunting. Joe, Joe Rogan and I are against spear hunting. We're into bow hunting though. Yes. Joe, actually, uh, Joe Rogan mentioned them on, on his uh, podcast before. But um, so, so I'll give you an example. So basically, uh, for born and raised outdoors, we know like we know what their their best offer was. Their best offer at and the thing that provided the most value wasn't to give a discount on their products. They wanted to give their 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 customers a gift. So they put together a gift package that was worth $150. So they have a DVD set of all of their hunts combined to, to something they call the seasons DVD set. And they also made a limited edition shirt that you cannot purchase. The only way that you can get it is by spending a certain amount of money. So when you spend $75 or more on their store, you get this free gift worth $125. It's a $100 gift set and a $25 limited edition shirt that you can't purchase. Well, a lot of their fans really like them. Of course, they want that DVD set because they're really interested in their content. And also they really want that shirt because it's limited edition. Uh, so there's a little bit of scarcity there involved, but it is a quality product overall. And so we know that if we ran that campaign for five days, let's say we ran it from, uh, or, or, or X amount of days, let's say we ran it from Thanksgiving until Cyber Monday. Does that really give at all of their fans, the hundreds and thousands of people that follow them, uh, does that really give their fans and their brand and their their consumers enough time to take advantage of that gift promo? No, we want a lot more time. We want to hit them with multiple emails, but we don't want to be annoying, so we we need more time. Uh, we want to we we want to spend you know maybe fifteen to, to fifty thousand dollars, depending on what the ROI is from these ad buys, but we don't want to have to cramp that into five days. So a really good example of a promo that will actually be running from Thanksgiving all the way until Christmas Eve is the spend 75, get the $125 gift set for free. That is a great promotion to never change for about 30 days. So you're going basically like, no, like Thanksgiving all the way to Christmas Eve. The reason why you would do that is because this is a big promotion. It's a big gift. They have inventory that they had to purchase for the gifts. It makes logical business sense. And it also... It's just something that we can constantly promote uh, throughout their video series in ads and emails and Facebook Messenger campaigns. Um, and so that's a great opportunity. If you're going to promote a, a free gift during the holiday season for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I really recommend that you extend that out to give yourself more opportunity to take advantage of. Um, it's, and, it's and not it's, a simple but, transaction. Like it's not just like, hey, pay for this, get this. It's like, offer something that builds hype and so you have to give it time to grow and foster and and get momentum basically to get the full value out of it yeah also it's just uh, frankly to me it's like it's almost a little rude to a consumer to be like hey spend 75 bucks on our store and get this free gift set but you only have three days to make a decision on 75 dollars worth of stuff from our store it's like okay why don't you advertise your product to them let them know what you have, let them come back a couple of times, decide on what they want, and then they'll make that purchase. 
If you give them 72 hours or five days to make that decision, it's, it's just, it's a little unfair to them, to be honest with you, in my, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Where you, I wanted to ask you, how much does discounting play into your overall e-commerce strategy? Like, are you, I, it's funny, like, uh, I, I work with Shine On a little bit, and it's like, they're, they're you know, mo- a lot of these e-commerce stores, their status quo is to have discounts listed as a tool. Is, is that something, is, do you use it a lot? And does it become less effective the more it's used? Um, so we have a lot of brands that actually won't give, like they truly don't really give discounts. In fact, that, um, it, it, in fact, like they just, they just don't give, give free shipping or a free gift or a free hat with a purchase of something, you know? Um, but there are certain brands that the discounting works very well for. Um, if, if you have something that you can give that has a very high perceived value, it is like the DVD set and the shirt, which is valuable. They do sell it for a hundred, you know, they sell that stuff for $120, $125 on the store. Um, it's, it's better to give them that gift than it is to just give them 20% off. Because sometimes they're only saving, you know, 10 bucks or, or five bucks. Um, but to answer your question, we do run discounts heavy. Some of our brands run very, very, very heavy discounts. Um, I'd say this year kind of seems like the, the the trend was to go BOGO, uh, buy okay. one, get one, rather than giving big discounts. And that's essentially equates to a 50% discount. But the the thing that we're really, um, in, in all marketers should really think about this in, in the direct response world is, um, is you want to pay attention to your average order value. If you're giving discounts, but you're getting a cost, if your normal cost per purchase is $10 and you're getting a $5 cost per purchase during the holidays, but you're giving such heavy discounts that your average order value plummets, your return on ad spend, your ROAS is going to lower. It it might not be any better than it normally was without the holidays around. Like, What was the point of giving the discount? You spent a lot of money and you returned the same amount you know, you, you return the same amount basically that, that, that you normally would. And so we do use discounts, but we're really careful to not offer really big discounts on the stuff that are best sellers or that keep our average order value up. So I'll give you an example. Um, we, we work with, um, a, a rodeo lifestyle brand called Lane Frost. Um, you know, they, they have, um, products that are, are their best selling products that are often ordered. Um, and, and it doesn't like, if we were to if we were to offer a big discount on that, it would it would take our average order value down quite significantly. So so what we're doing there is we offer thirty percent off on one tier of products, twenty percent off on another tier of product, and ten percent off on another tier of product. And that and that's essentially like it's based on margin and also based on like how much those products cost. Uh, so that we're managing our average order value a little bit more strategically than 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 you would. And I think that just the one final step on that is if you are going to run discounts, like you should always make sure right now, like, okay, this is my ad spend. It's it, I have a ten thousand dollar ad spend. My normal customer acquisition cost is ten bucks. Okay, my average order value is this. You know, I'm estimating my average order value will be this after I give discounts. What is my return on ad spend going to be? If you're not pre-penciling out, like and making sure your numbers you know, work out before you're launching your ads with those discounts, you're doing it wrong. You know, you, you got you got to make sure that the numbers pencil out before you launch it. And that goes that goes with everything you're saying too about how you plan campaigns months in advance with with the right buildups and the right the right incentives. It's really, I think, a lot of uh, you know the, the scrappy mindset. It traditionally would be like, hey fly into it and, and, and see how it goes and go from there. But like, it's interesting that you've learned to be a lot more sort of, um, you know, procedural about how you do all this. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it's funny. I was, I was listening to Nick Shackelford's post about he, like his, his results from black Friday this year versus last year. They were similar. I'm sure they were great. They were, he said they were similar, but he, but this year there was way less stress, way less because they had these procedures in place a lot more. They knew, they knew what to expect. So I'm sure every black Friday that passes, you just build your expertise and, and get better and better. Make it easier on yourself and the client probably. Yeah, I can tell you that last year we worked on Thanksgiving, Black Friday, that Saturday, that Sunday, <laughs> and, and, and you know, and 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 even leading up to that, there was a lot of hair pulling, 
Uh, and, and this year it was, hey, uh, let's talk on Thanksgiving morning. Let's talk on Friday. Let's make sure that everything is running properly. We had to troubleshoot a couple of minor issues. But other than that, everyone got to enjoy times with their family. So uh, we, we were really stoked about that this year. And, and we did, honestly, um, three months in advance. We're, we're thinking about Black Friday, Cyber Monday, droughting discounts removing certain products from the store, you know, encouraging clients to release new products for this weekend. You know, there, there was a, just a lot of strategic planning that went into this year's Black Friday, Cyber Monday, uh, powwowing with clients many, many, many times before we launch. Very cool. Nice. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about Las Vegas. We've got uh, you coming to speak along with, I think, 13 other amazing speakers for Facebook and e-commerce live. We have you speaking on day one, sort of the agency focus Facebook ads day. Uh, so I want to just talk a get a little preview about what you're going to talk about uh, in Las Vegas. That people can expect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, honestly, the the stuff that I the, the stuff that we've been doing uh, that I'm I'm really psyched about that I don't really see a lot of other people in the industry talking about is basically how to uh, how how to combine your influencer marketing and your and your Facebook and your so well really just honestly your media buys and your influencer marketing together or basically tying them together if you're not already doing influencer marketing, how you can get started with influencer marketing to help compound returns on your media buys. And so a lot of the stuff that we've been doing recently is um, basically making influencer ad buys, uh, or we call them influencer ad buys because we see it basically as like, uh, you know, an ad buy, we have a budget, we negotiate with a bunch of influencers. And the way that we've been making these ad buys, and I'll give you a little tease here is, Basically what, basically, what the strategy is, is uh, instead of just normally focusing on making an influencer, um, you know, in investing in influencer marketing and just expecting traffic and ROI on purchases, one of the things that we're doing is we're trying to find influencers that are, that are recognizable in specific niches. So if we have a country music, if, if we're going after like a country, a country slash rural audience, try and find a country music star. And, and we'll pay them for influencer posts, but not really to pay them to drive traffic, really paying them for, for their name and likeliness and the right to use their name and likeliness in ads. And then we're pulling their creative and ad buys, which then are immediately have social validation and social verification. Um, and they, they get a higher click through rate. Uh, we have a higher conversion rate because they saw someone that they knew in the ad. Um, and yes, we paid them to post on Instagram and Facebook. We, you know, we paid them for this creative, um, but we're able to use their name and likeliness for six, eight, you know, or three, six, you know, nine months at a time, sometimes a year. Um, and we're, we're really combining influencer marketing and media buying into one, uh, to get immediate social validation for branding purposes and to increase conversion rates. Um, and it's something that I think that a lot of people are afraid to do is to spend money on influencer marketing. Um, and, and not get a direct return from the influencer buy. Well, it's like, well, you know, if, if you have your contract in place and you're able to get their, their name and likely, you know, their, their name and, and likeness, uh, to, to use an ad, you can make your ads go a lot farther. And so, so that's what I'll be talking Very about. Very cool. And you can, qual yeah, just basically like taking that influence and yeah, making it a hybrid influencer ad campaign. It's dead simple, but it, but I'm, I, you know, it, it just makes so much sense to, and it, and it takes the, the influence marketing to, to a place that's so much more, the returns are so much more trackable uh, mm -hmm. and, and extendable, right? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. It's awesome. it, it, what, what we're noticing is that um, what, when you do influencer marketing, so much is out of your hands. When you're buying ads on Facebook, you, you really control almost 100% of what you're doing, right? Um, when, when you relinquish, when you're working with an influencer, you, you really relinquish a lot of control. Uh, when are they posting? What are they posting? What was their energy in the video? What was the product review? What did they focus on? Um, was it just a static image? Did they link off properly? Did they use your, you know, did they use your tagged link, your tracked link? Um, there's just a lot of stuff that's, that's left up in the air. Um, however, if we do an audit on, on an influencer and we know that like, wow, this person is really recognizable in this specific niche. They have a lot of followers in this niche. I want to go after that niche. So we reach out to them, say, hey, we want you to post on Instagram and Facebook standard stuff, but we also want you to send us three to five additional photos so that we can use them in ads, get them to sign off on it, and we'll actually run ads 
with them and the creative of the ads. And so that's the stuff that's really crushing it all. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I can't wait to hear more about it. A full presentation in Las Vegas, January 9th. You'll also we'll be there for exactly the Nice. So we'll, Very we'll cool. Well, the last that second. I wanted to mention, sorry, go ahead. I'm saying, well, we'll show you exactly how we do it. Fantastic. Um, I wanted to mention that you will also be at the speaker's dinner, I think, on uh, January 10th, uh, which will be, we have a really special evening plan there. So that's going to be fun. Um, and yeah, so I wanted, there's one last thing I wanted to talk about. It's something that we talked about earlier when we were, when we were uh, getting you on here. Uh, I, had, I sort of found out that you've been, you've been sort of nominated by a bunch of different people uh, for the Forbes 30 under 30 uh, competition, which is such a prestigious, uh, such a prestigious thing. I'm, I'm interested in how that kind of came about and what you're, what, what you're aiming to do with it. Yeah. Um, so you'll be able to vote for me in this upcoming 2019 class for Forbes 30 under 30. Um, and honestly, it's just been, um, it's been a wild ride. I've, uh, before the agency, I, I've, I've done everything from residential exterior house painting to event production to, uh, conference production, which kind of falls another subset of, of, of event production. Um, I've done, I've done e-commerce, I've done agency related work. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been very, very, very fortunate to meet a lot of, uh, successful talented people before me that have been nominated or, or are Forbes 30 under 30 and, uh, kind of just, you know, asked the correct questions and ended up in the right places at the right time. And, um, honestly, you know, been, been fortunate for a lot of my work to be successful and and to have a great team now that is behind me that makes me look even better and more powerful so shout out to them and uh you know and, or not not more powerful but but more successful and um uh, yeah this, this year for 30 under 30 you'll be able to you'll be able to vote for me hopefully you like what i'm talking about at at the iStack event in vegas and uh maybe i'll get your vote too that's fantastic are you able to talk a little bit we talked a little bit about the initiative that was sort of behind uh, that, like the, one of the things that you're going to be talking about during the application process or uh, that was related to sort of a charitable aspect to what you're doing. Are you able to talk about that or is it too early? Yeah. 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 Um, awesome. So basically uh, what we're working on right now, we haven't been, we haven't actually gotten the opportunity to talk to all of our clients yet. So uh, for those, for those clients that are, that are watching uh, this will be coming soon, but basically um, but what me and my business partners uh, and team have been working on is ability for um, all all e-commerce stores, but specifically Shopify, Magento, and uh, WooCommerce, for the ability for them to be able to uh, donate to a charity of their choice. So at, at at checkout. So what we're trying to do, and and really what the and really what the campaign is, um, is that uh, basically we're convincing not only all of our clients, but also uh, friends in the industry to, for 30 days, donate 1% of revenue, not profit, 1% of revenue to the nonprofit of the consumer's choice at checkout. So the consumer will be able to normally check out. At checkout, there'll be a suggested list of people that that company suggests to donate to, but you can literally donate to anyone. So there's like 1.2 million nonprofits uh, from all over the world, uh, and you'll be able to donate directly to them with your purchase. Uh, and the goal was is kind of just like kind of like a you know just a, a a giving back campaign, and and that's kind of what what uh, just like you said, kind of to, uh, to to pop the surprise. That that's really what the campaign is really going to be all about, and and uh, hopefully we're able to pull it off with success and 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 donate a good amount of money to to people. Uh, based on who they want to donate money to, not not who the company wants to donate money to. So I'm stoked about that. That's super cool. And this would be an app that would then go into into the Shopify sort of environment, or or is that like how would that actually work technically? Yeah. So it, it's basically a cart add-on. We're actually going to be working with another company. We're going to license their technology, uh, and it works very much so like Amazon Smile, except once you get to the checkout process, uh, you know. Once you get to the checkout process, it'll literally have something where it says you're donating a dollar and eighty cents, uh, or it'll say you're do you're donating thirty dollars, depending on how big your purchase is. And you can select, you can search for any charity. So, say you want to, you know, give to, you know, some of our hunting clients might want to, you know, give to their people might want to give to the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation 
or you know, for some of our beauty brands, give to some you know ch children or. Uh, or, or, or female non, you know, female focused nonprofits, right? Um, and so they'll be able to choose and select the charity of, of their choice at checkout. It will function like an app, uh, and we we've got a lot more in the works for that. And, and I'm happy to get back on another live and share what we're doing there and show you guys how we're doing that. Uh, probably at a later date, but we we still have a lot to figure out there. But uh, we definitely have the foundational information, and we have do have the thumbs up on technology to be able to get it done. And really the, the, the biggest issue is how do you get 1.2 million uh, into a very easy, quick way to just search and donate your money to them and, and just a couple clicks without clogging up the checkout process to abandoned cart uh, and instead use it as a motivation to check out and donate money to a nonprofit that you want to give to. Um, so, so that's the stuff that, that, that we're doing. Very cool. Nice, man. Well, I want to thank you to, uh, for coming on today. Uh, I think there's been a ton of gold as always when we chat. So I really appreciate that. And I just can't wait for the new year. I'm, I fly to Bangkok on Sunday for e-commerce mastery live. We're literally down to like five tickets remaining for that. Uh, so it's going to definitely sell out. I wish and, I could uh, be there. There's too, yeah, there's man. too much going on at the moment. Yeah. A week in Bangkok takes, takes it out of you for sure. But, uh, but like I'm excited. Yeah. I get there. Yeah, next year. We'll, we'll get you back next year for sure. Next year. But yeah. Right, okay. Appreciate it. And uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, I'm active in the Facebook Ad Buyers group. I'm also on Instagram at Colin Magoo, uh, MCGOO. It's not my real last name on Instagram, uh, but my, my Instagram's there. I'm happy to answer questions uh, on this post. I'm pretty sure it'll be there. Or if you ever see me comment, uh, you know, I'm, I'm active in the ad buyers group and I'm also active in the iStack training group. Happy to answer any questions for you guys and hopefully see you guys all out in Vegas uh, and, and at the speaker's dinner. I, I heard there's only a couple of seats left for that too, I saw in the uh, chat, right? That's right, yeah, we, we've already sold 20 tickets to that. So I think, we, yeah, we've got, we're not exactly sure the, the, the limit, we think it's gonna be limited to 40, but we gotta get all the speakers and sponsors and stuff there. So there's probably just a handful left there as well. It's, it's uh, the pickup on this this event in Vegas, like the lineup we've assembled in Vegas, uh, the both days, the, the 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 diversity of content that we're bringing to the table. Uh, we have people pretty excited about it, and uh, yeah, it's convert the page is converting really well. So those oh, tickets yeah. are going to sell out sooner than later, uh, and I'm super excited about it. So uh, so, anyways, thanks for your help with everything, Colin, and uh, we will see you soon.